Flint River Keeper. We will be with Flint River Keeper, that's the point of party. And he will explain. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna switch and let you go first okay. because I don't I should better okay. have you talk about this okay. well. Thank you, John, and uh, thank you for the invitation and well, for that review of uh, well, a lot a lot of activism. We've uh, we've been involved in it since late twelve. Yes. And very actively since 2013. And uh, our approach early on was uh, a very measured approach uh, to comment on all the federal and state permits and to also uh, set up a situation where we had legal standing in case we needed to bring suit. And we did bring suit. Uh, in in the against the 404 permit, which is the permit to destroy wetlands as they're as they're moving uh, through uh, the the permitting process, and we also brought a series of legal actions against the certificate itself. So I'm going to stop right there and say that um, the whole FERC permitting system and certification system goes back to World War II, uh, to, to the 1940s. And there have been some changes to the Federal Natural Gas Act since then, but the basic theme from the 1940s remains. And, and the problem in the 40s was that natural gas needed to be delivered from Pennsylvania and the Gulf of Mexico to the major shipbuilding centers uh, on the East Coast to get that energy there for, for various reasons so that we could keep the world safe for democracy, frankly. And it was quite justified in terms of what they did because there were entire states, and state legislators and governors, and private property owners that simply didn't want pipelines coming through their state or across their property. Same as today, uh, but with a much different purpose at, at the time. And I think in hindsight, we could probably all agree that putting Mussolini, Hitler, and Tojo out of business was, was a good idea. Um, and so I, there, there's not much debate about that um, on either side of the aisle by anybody that's alive today. Um, but the the power of the federal government has translated forward um, since the 1940s, and it is virtually impossible to stop an action by FERC at, at this point in time due to the way the Natural Gas Act is written. Um, this major victory, for example, that we had in the Georgia legislature, where, where the Georgia House, which is a, which is a very um, Republican body, and uh, um, a large number of senators um, on, on the Senate side, although we lost it there, but in, in the House, and I don't remember the numbers, but maybe, John, you can remember the numbers. There were 31 votes in favor of it and 140-something votes. 128 to 34. 128 to 34. I memorized that. That, that, that we, we won this vote where they said, you're not going to bring this pipeline through Georgia. And, and they did that they did that by denying the easements underneath the, the Chattahoochee River, the Flint, Oka, I can't pronounce it. Okapilco. But, but, but that was a temporary victory because the power of the federal government is such that they can simply use eminent domain against the state the same way they do against private property owners, and there's no stopping them. So that, that's the power of the Natural Gas Act. And everybody needs to remember that. So when we got into the final stages of these appeals, which we were having less and less and less hope um, for, for winning, with indeterminate results even if you did win, the arguments that we had were ceased to be about water and, and, and the, the threats to water. And they ceased to be about private property. 
and the threats to private property. All, all of that went by the boards and we lost, we lost every one of them. Um, and what was left that, that were legitimate legal arguments were the environmental justice arguments, which has to do with siting compressor stations in impoverished and disadvantaged communities like the, the southwest side of Albany. Um, the economic analysis, which means the, the, return, the return on investment, the return on equity uh, analysis, which uh, we still think is a winning argument, uh, and the greenhouse gas argument. So that's all that we were left with. And we took it ultimately to the D.C. Circuit Court, which if you win or lose in the D.C. Circuit Court, that decision has national implications. It's not just on this case. It affects everybody, everywhere, on anything similar. Um, we actually won. Um, very surprising. Even our attorneys were shocked. Uh, and we... In, in fact, had a hard time putting together a press release in terms of what to say. Th thankfully, Sierra Club left Flint Riverkeeper and Chattahoochee Riverkeeper out of the press release uh, because what was put in the press release we didn't really agree with. Um, but the 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 shock was was immense, and it wasn't until yesterday. Uh, in, a, in a very long conference call with attorneys um, that I finally learned what all this can mean. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it with you as simply as I can, keeping in mind that something I say here could be wrong because I'm not an attorney. Um, I'm, a, I'm a fisheries biologist by trade and I used to be in the portable toilet and demolition business <laughs> and now I'm a river keeper um, and have been um, for about 13 years, uh, so I, I could make an error here, but I'm, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to repeat what I heard yesterday and try to interpret it as best I can. Uh, number one, um, their analysis on greenhouse gases, which means the effect of what's burned on the other end of the pipe at the power plants, was done incorrectly. It was incomplete, and it was substantially deficient. And so on that, and that alone, it was remanded to FERC. So it's, it's decertified. And that has happened before. Um, re remands have happened for a reanalysis. Um, but in this case, it was done with what's called a vacateur, which is a vacation, mean, meaning a nullification of the certificate itself. Not just reanalyze it and put it in a file, but the, but the certificate is vacated, which means technically right now what they're doing with gas flowing through it is, is subject to have a stop put to it. Now the court has not written what they call a mandate yet. That's another step where the court actually delivers uh, a mandamus sort of certif uh, letter to FERC and to the and to Sable Trail that says stop. So that hasn't happened yet, but it's any day now. And at that point, um, there are several legal maneuvers that Sable, which is the intervener in the case, and FERC, which is the target of the case, can take to ask the panel of judges to put a stay on the mandate so that the gas can keep flowing and they can pr continue to supply the customers and, and make money. And we don't know what's going to come out of all that at this point. The lawyers can't say. Um, October 6th is a magic date in all of this um, because that's the deadline for FERC and Sable Trail to do several things. One is to ask this three-judge panel to do it again. In other words, please look at it again based on these, these arguments. You know, whatever they present to them. Um, it's very unlikely that that panel would agree to do that. They'd probably just say, no, we've decided we're done. The other thing that they could ask for is what's called an en banc, E-N-B-A-N-C, review by the D.C. Circuit, which means all the judges in that circuit, not just the three that, that looked at the case. 
And the odds of that happening are slightly higher, but not good for, for, for Sable. Um, but while the court is deciding whether or not they're going to do these things, um, whatever status the pipeline is in, whether it's shut down or there's a stay on the, um, on the mandate, that continues. So Sable's going to be pushing for this stay. Uh, and it'll be interesting to look, and you should watch your email inboxes and the Facebook pages and to, to see what actually happens with that. Uh, until yesterday, I didn't think there was any right way that the gas, I didn't see a legal pathway that the gas would quit flowing. And the lawyers were being very quiet about it. But um, yesterday they said, yes, there's a way that, that the gas could actually quit flowing. But that, I mean, so it, it's possible, but I'm not telling you that it's probable. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that, that's, that's what, that's better than it, it, it's, it's better than I thought. Yeah. Um, and we'll just see what happens. Uh, that's all we can do. The other thing that Sable can do is, and, or FERC, um, is ask the Supreme Court to take a look at it. Just go, just go right by the, um, the, the D.C. Circuit and go straight to a request to the Supreme Court. And that's called a request for cert, or, cert, or certification for the Supreme Court to take a look at it. And then that, if the Supreme Court, well, first off, there's a long period of time where the Supreme Court looks at that to decide whether they're going to hear it or not. And then if they do, then there's another calendar that starts. And so there's many things here that could happen, and I probably have described some of it incorrectly because I'm not an attorney. Um, but, the, but the key thing in all of that is this stay and when they apply for it, and whether they apply for it, and whether it's granted or not. Yes, ma'am. How likely is it that FERC will just do the rain analysis and say, oh, it's fine, let's keep the gas low? I mean, that, that seems well, like the, it could be a possibility. The, the, the court order is that they but do they that, do. that they do that. Yeah. Um, but. All of this is maneuvering on both sides. If they're able to get the stay on the mandate, then all of these requests actually buy time. Yeah. And so there, there's all these time factors in there, and as we know, time is money in, in, in any business. Um, and so all of that's in play. So how likely is that to happen? Probably not very likely. There, there probably will be some sort of attempt to appeal it, either to the level that it's at now or higher, along with the requests for the for the stay. Um, eventually, we will probably get to the reanalysis phase, and probably FERC is already working on that because time is money, um, and they're they're a captive agency. Uh, by captive agency, I mean the energy industry owns FERC. It's, it's, a, it's a totally captive agency. So they're probably already working on that. Um, and there are a lot of questions that arise within that um, arena also. If they're going to do a, a, a complete reanalysis and do it right, won't we have a, an opportunity to comment on that and then, and then challenge, challenge the content of that? Won't the public have um, an opportunity for public hearings and written public comment? And the answer on all of that is yes, probably. We, we, can, we can make comment. We can ask for public hearings. Those are things that need to be done. Uh, the public hearings would probably be restricted to, well, they would, they would definitely be restricted to only the greenhouse gas analysis. Um, and probably geographically be restricted to those communities where the, the gas would be burned. So if it wouldn't be here, and it wouldn't be in Albany, and it's not going to be in Alabama. It's going to be at the ends of at the ends of the pipes. Is, is where it's where it would likely be, where the power plants are. So there there are a lot of pieces in play here, 
And there are a lot of different things that could happen. Um, at supper, I told John, this is less like a poker hand, and it's more like a long, drawn-out um, gathering of folks playing bridge and, 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 and changing tables. Um, it's, it's, it's a very, but, but it's a game. I mean, we're, we're still involved in the game. The game is on. And we thought the game was off. Yeah. Uh, more broadly, um, the energy companies um, are on the run with this thing. It's, uh, it's pretty scary for them. And there's been a pipeline that's already been stymied because of it up in the mid-Atlantic, as, as John explained. And uh, it's, it's really interesting if, if you're a political junkie like I am, um, uh, people in the Georgia House and Senate label me a raging liberal and my dad's pretty sure I'm a Republican. I'm a really practical guy, you know, in terms of politics. Um, I play to win and I don't do party politics. Uh, but if you're a political junkie and watching CNN and Fox and listening to NPR and trying to put all together what's going on in this country, the energy policy of the current administration and this court decision are at the polar opposite ends of, of each other. And nothing's going to change this. This is, a, this is a nationwide court decision unless a higher court, and there's only two, the en banc ask or the Supreme Court. Um, nothing's going to change this other than con those two courts or Congress. And so what this means is that lots of energy projects, not just, not just this pipeline, but lots of energy projects are subject to this sort of EIS review. And that, that's, that's, that's interesting news, and that's why the energy press is, is full of this story right now. I so see is this the two first questions. time that they, like, is this totally something new? This that, is shocking. That FERC has been asked to look at the emissions. Told, told, to. Yeah. told yeah. to. Told to. So other energy things like coal and all, they don't have to do that analysis? Do you know? I can't answer that question. Yeah. But I think it has industry-wide impact. I'm pretty sure that it does. I think the answer is yes, but I can't answer that question for sure. Even the attorneys can't answer that question. Even the attorneys can't answer that question. But but there there's a lot of people scratching their heads on both sides of this issue right now tonight. Yes, sir. Another question: The gas that gets burned is it power plants? The end of the line, or is it something they're going to ship it over to another country? Well, what they what they admit to, and what they pull up for evidence, are contracts with power plants. And yet, when you look at the volumes of gas that are coming into Florida, and the the probable decrease in demand that's going to happen over the next ten to twenty years, as opposed to an increase, there's way more pipeline capacity coming into Florida now than there is customers down the road. So the question of export looms large. So wouldn't that let them off the hook, say we're not burning it, we're sending it overseas, and that's how a, does that play? That's a great question because it gets burned somewhere. And do we, we don't, do we care about what happens? That's a great question and the lawyers are scratching their heads. Then the other question I had is the D.C. court playing politics here with their decision because... Well, um, one appointee was a very conservative judge. He was a Bush appointee. And um, another, the other one that voted with him was a Clinton appointee, more moderate. Um, I, so I don't think so. I think they were reading the law. And, uh, you know, a lot of judges all over the country get accused, get accused of playing politics, but I have yet to run into a judge that was playing politics. The judges I've always dealt with are looking at the law, and, they, and they're interested in their careers and getting it right so that they don't have a bunch of decisions that are reversed 
That's you know, embarrassing. one that it's embarrassing to them, and, and they're, they're not into that stuff. They're serious people. Um, what you hear about judges in the press and the reality on the ground are two different things in my experience. And in this particular case, you've got a Bush appointee and a Clinton appointee. This is not a particularly liberal panel of judges. It's fascinating. The whole thing's fascinating. And I wish I could give you black and white scenarios of what's fixing to happen, but I can't. So that's, that's about it. And uh, boy, if you told me five weeks ago I'd be down here giving a talk on this topic, I'd have said, ah, you got to be kidding Mm -hmm. We're in a strange spot. Mm -hmm. So now to get the updates on this, of what next developments, we just need to be where we get. Uh, as soon as we know stuff, we're going to post it, and frequently John posts it before I do. That's why you need to get in our vaults, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Really? Well, that is the quickest yeah. way to get what we are learning. Yeah. That's right. Well, how have they protected the line from those say, terrorists? Well, how good for us? I would say not at all. Because I was a deputy in Tampa, and that one pipeline that you showed coming in over there was right on the West Shore Boulevard. I'd say not. I'd say not. I'd say right in between El Prado and I'd say I'd say, say not at all. And I and I, I, I think that you know personally, my personal opinion is that the infrastructure in our country is extremely vulnerable to so that it's sort of thing. Right. Not just gas pipelines, right. but. All, all, the, all, all the infrastructure, but you know, but they got those big tanks down there, the nitric oxide, you know, highly flammable. You know, a lot of people are critical of, of our government in many, many ways, and I certainly am. Um, but I think it's remarkable that nothing major has happened in this country since 2001. Some, I don't think that's by chance. I, I think somebody somewhere is doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. But I think we're very vulnerable. Yeah. Because we were always scared down there in Tampa. Because if that one tank went, it would level all of Tampa. Yeah. All of it. And even where I live, I live maybe 20, not even 20 miles, what, 15? 15. We would have been blown off on that too. And, and I think that's a great segue to the whole LNG. Um, mm -hmm. Discussion, which I'm not qualified to talk about, but a pipeline is one thing, but giant storage tanks full of LNG right. is a <laughs> that that's you know, that's a whole yeah, other yeah, level of danger. Right. Well, like you yeah. were saying, about, you know, that they, they yeah. fill up a, a cargo container, right? You know, or trucks, it's or trains. Phosphate, the phosphate, the phosphate, and mm -hmm. if it was for, for us to consume power, it's one thing, but if just sending it over mm -hmm. and making a profit it and using our right. evident domain mm -hmm. to make a profit yeah. without getting yeah, us that's, any. That's been our that's, some point, but it didn't count with the court. Well, we're, but it, it didn't count with the court because of the way the law was written. The court, the court can't change the law. No. They can it's interpret. The they can interpret the law, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and right. when it's properly done, they do that correctly. Um, but there, there's no challenge in FERC on the eminent domain issue. The law is very clear that FERC can give that power to the pipeline company and they simply exercise it. There is no way to stop it. So that has to be changed. That has Congress. to be changed in Congress. Yeah, and and in my opinion, people on both sides of the aisle, yes. particularly Tea Partiers in particular, yes. should be very concerned about that well, because it's very because it, it, it's very it's it's, it's a very high level of power that the federal government is transferring to a private entity. And I think, I think that Republican congressmen should be particularly respons responsive to that. Mm -hmm. But we, we have traction with some and we have no traction with others. And the only way I can figure it is that there's some that are bought off and there's some that are <laughs> more bought off than others. Yeah, more bought off than others. <laughs> yeah. 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 Back then to, I don't know, like Mussolini and, and to, to, for the war effort, now the gas isn't doing that same function. But Not they, at all. But they allow them to, to get it. There's there. a glut. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we, we, despite all of these losses and this one victory, 
the fundamental um, point that the Natural Gas Act needs to be changed remains. And, and if, if, it, if, if it were not the way it is, we wouldn't even be here having this conversation. Right, exactly. Because uh, in, in my opinion, exactly. certainly states, uh, at least at that level, and perhaps county officials should have some say, and private property owners should have some standing mm -hmm. in court to object to it based on the public need analysis. Because there is no public need in a speculative uh, project where you've got a new pipeline company that's now in competition with three others. That's 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 not a public need. That's a that's a private venture that has nothing to do with the public. So whether it's going overseas or not, yeah. But particularly if it's going overseas. It's even more. That's so yeah. I mean, Georgians are such, and, and maybe there are a lot of Floridians that are this way too. I mean. We view in Georgia, in my culture, Alabama is a different country. <laughs> Florida is a different country. I mean, I, I mean, culturally, that's how we look at it. Yes, yes. And, and, and so the whole notion of somebody somewhere else making money while eminent domain is being exercised in, of in 17 counties off of, of, off of my, me and my friend's properties, that's just mm -hmm. anathema I to agree. us. I agree. Um, that's a good way to put it. That's a real good way And that's, to put it. that's the way we look at it. <laughs> they should be able to buy the property. Yeah. Because my buddy Bobby, the line was supposed to go right through his back of the watches and I was supposed to be four foot off his back porch. And when he went to the meeting down there, he flat out told the guy, you put a bulldoze on my property because I will take the driver out. He goes, I don't care what happened to me, I lost my place. Pipelines ought to yes. be in the same boat as natural gas pipelines should be in the same boat as oil, gas, and diesel pipelines, yes. which 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 are, are covered under a different set of laws as a reservoir, as an electric power line. It should it should all be handled the same mm -hmm. way, but natural gas is not handled the same as the rest of those, and it should and it should be. Anyway. Well, thank you for the yeah. question. How can they never thought about putting the line above the ground? I don't know the answer to that. They did. I believe they have considered that, but that that has a lot of problems. Also. Oh, I know it does. <laughs> now you got your wildlife that's got to go. Well, cross. and your you have crossings, so you know yes. road crossings, and you know you know there's exactly the owner. And then talk about a target. Yes. Yeah. So, I but I do believe other. that is when they say that it's something they consider. Well, th thank you all for having me. Thank you. And those of you that have worked on this, um, thank you for working on it. And don't don't give up hope because yeah. miraculously, thank God, it's not it's know. not over. You just yeah. started something yeah. and the ripple effect. Yeah. You just have to have faith that things will You got to fight it till the end, Coach yeah. Rick who's in Miami and used to be in Athens said, finish the drill. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I believe in finishing the drill. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excuse me, I'll use the rest of Okay. okay.